guys. So I am going to talk about EBCs of open fractures. Let's just dive right into it. When it comes to open fractures, I wanted to summarize some of the key facts that tend to be high yield um, with our first topic being golden hour. So the golden hour is actually six to eight hours. So you can definitely memorize that number, no problem, but that's not what CB podiatry is all about. I want you to be able to understand. I want you to be able to explain it to someone why why is it six to eight hours? So the reason behind it is that that is how long it takes bacteria to multiply 10 to the fifth power, which is just enough bacteria to cause infection. So now, guess what? You don't need to memorize it. You know the exact meaning behind it. And definitely this is a super high yield topic. So know it, know it, know it. Um, now I'd like to get into the first seven steps that you need to take in order to treat an open fracture. And I want to simplify it into this called ABCs. And we'll talk about this little mnemonic as we go through it. So the first step is making sure nothing is obstructing that airway, okay? So either, you know, food or their tongue, get it all away. We don't need that stuff. The second step is making sure that they are breathing. So either watch that chest rise up and down or you can put your ear against their mouth to check for airflow. Very, very key thing. The third one is circulation. So make sure that there is blood flow. There's no compromised limb. So check if it's warm to the touch, cool to the touch. Check all the popliteals, dorsalis, pedis, posterior tibial artery. And then finally, the fourth one is ditch those clothes. Um, most of them could be like the shoe, the pant, get it out of the way, make sure there's no, you know, nails or foreign body around it. The fifth is checking for, is a neuro check. So you want to check for sensation. If they're conscious, they can let you know if they can feel it. And then six is going to be tetanus, which we'll get to it shortly, but I'm going to mention number seven, which is going to be the Gastillo Anderson classification when it comes to, um, open fractures. We'll get to that too. Got to make it nice and pretty. So we know it. So, so before we get into that mnemonic, and we, I really want to spend time on tetanus check, okay? I want to make it super easy for you so you don't even need to think about it. First thing is tetanus is caused by a bacteria called C. tetani. It's an anaerobic bacillus bacteria, and you need a booster shot every 10 years. I love starting with an example question to make sense of this. So somebody steps on a clean glass in the foot, and they're like, I don't know what my tetanus status is. And so before you answer this question, I am going to draw up this super beautiful way to remember it and never forget it. So let's start by drawing the letter M. Okay, the left side is going to be your dirty side. The right side is going to be your clean side. And then I have the years when you need to give this booster shot. So if you're on the clean side and it's been more than 10 years, you need a toxoid booster, also abbreviated TD. If you're on step on something dirty, then you need the booster if it's been past five years. Okay, again, toxoid booster. Now it comes in the center zone. This is the unknown zone. So if it's clean, you step on something clean like a clean glass and you're like, I don't know my, my tetanus status, it's gonna be toxoid given. But if it's dirty, then you have to give both toxoid and immunoglobulin, which is TIG. That's the only different one that you need to memorize is that dirty, unknown, give both. I'm gonna highlight everything, make it all nice and pretty, put all my stars in, and there's your um, A, B, C, D, not Gastillo, because we don't, and none of us wanna get Gastillo, okay? So let's start talking about the Gastillo-Anderson classification. I'm gonna start by making this table, and there are actually three types to this Gastillo-Anderson. With type one, for example, this is gonna be like the gunshot that leaves a less than one centimeter wound, very minimal fracture, and those are your key buzzwords, okay? Commonly seen in question stems. So in general, these fractures, you want to start them all on ANCEF, which is a first generation cephalosporin. Now, if they have a penicillin allergy at times, patients can be allergic to cephalosporin too, even though the literature says it is proven to be very, very low in chance, you can give them clindamycin, okay? And so antibiotics are usually given for a total of 72 hours. You only keep them on there for the antibiotics for 24 hours after soft tissue closure. 
um, has been achieved. There's no extra benefit in keeping them actually longer. And each time you go for a debridement, you gotta restart that antibiotic clock, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and just make things red here so they can stand out. These are the key things for this particular type. So now for type two, this is when the wound size is one to five centimeters. There's a very complex fracture. There is more soft tissue damage, but the key word or buzzword is that you can still close it without a skin graft. Very, very important. Don't forget that. And then finally, um, let's move on to type three. So some of the things with the type three, this is definitely gonna be greater than six centimeters, okay? And the biggest thing with this one's actually broken down into three different parts. So for type three A, this is when you have extensive soft tissue damage. This is when you do need a graft, okay? And compare that to type two, we didn't need a graft. Another key word to look for during, um, during tests, okay? Another big thing is knowing the chance of infection. So with a type 3A, only a 4% chance of infection, pretty low. But when it comes to type B, this is when the periosteum is stripped, you're increasing, you have an increased chance of infection to 50% because the periosteum is how the bone gets its blood supply, it's essentially protecting it. And this, they tend to show you a picture of an exposed bone. Finally, C, type 3C is the worst. You've got a foot that feels cold to touch. You've got artery that's been compromised. They may show you a picture of exposed bone, lacerated artery. Your chance of infection is 42% chance. Okay. Now, let's say you had a gunshot wound. Add an aminoglycoside like gentamicin. Um, if you had a farm injury, add penicillin. These are just textbook answers. In real life, we don't really give these, we just stick to ANSEF because aminoglycosides actually do more harm to the body than heal it. And another um, big key to remember with any of this um, type of injury is that you want to wait for at least three months before using a bone graft. This way, um, you are definitely infection free and you don't have the chances of getting infected. So if you're more of a picture person like me, I am actually going to throw in a few of the artistic version of this classification um, and hopefully it sticks a little bit better. So we've got type one, two, and three. With type one, we've got, like we said, less than one centimeter um, wound. Type two, we've got the one to five centimeter. You see that complex fracture now? Yes, I drew these. And then type three, we've got A, B, and C, with the C being the artery is compromised, okay? No pulse, usually they'll say to you, or a blue foot. Um, and that's it, you guys. That is our A, B, C, D, not Castillo. Woo, we did it. Now you know it. Now it's time for a snack. Peace. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you have any suggestions on other podiatry related topics I should go over next, leave a comment below or visit the website. Dr. CB signing off. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.